This is Jonah from Typewriter Minutes. According to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, sterling can mean an adjective for the British sterling currency, or a fixed standard of purity of silver, or conforming to the highest standard, such as a, a sterling character or a sterling record of achievement. We at Typewriter Minutes recently came across a machine that is more valuable to us than the British Sterling, is a pure delight to type on, and conforms to the highest standards of typewriters. Hi, this is Ailey from Typewriter Minutes. Today we're going to be doing a review on a 1947 Smith Corona Sterling. So this beautiful machine we picked up here locally. A lady um, was selling it. It was her father's typewriter. Keith was his name, so I'm gonna nickname this typewriter Keith. He lived in California. I believe she said he went to college out there and at some point they moved to Texas. And we were very glad to get it because it's just a beautiful machine. It was, it was pretty dirty when we got it. The insides were filthy dirty and we took it apart, cleaned the inside, cleaned the outside. And when these are clean, these black on black Smith Coronas, I think are some of the best looking typewriters out there. We've already done a review of a 1946 Silent, you may recall. And this machine is nearly identical, but we'll point out uh, the few differences that I've noticed other than uh, the Silent obviously says Silent on the back. This one says Sterling. The Silent that we have has three stripes on each side of the ribbon cover. This one has two. The only other difference that I noticed was that on the silent, there's a quick release latch for the platen. This little cleat here on the silent slides back and then you can lift the platen out. To get this platen out, you have to remove three screws on this little cleat. So a little bit more trouble getting the platen out on this one compared to the silent. But other than that, I didn't really notice any other differences. They both have about the same amount of sound insulation on the body panels. All the features are the same. So if anybody else is aware of any other differences, please let us know. Uh, but the machine, once, like I said, once they're cleaned up, this black on black just really looks nice. So we're going to cover a few of the features. All right, here in the front, we have the this is the manual ribbon reverse. It has an automatic ribbon reverse underneath the hood. You just pop up the ribbon cover. But actually, be careful when you pop up the ribbon cover. You want to make sure the carriage is far enough left that this doesn't get scraped over here. But if you lift this up, you could see the two forks there. On these particular ribbons, you have to have um, little eyelets on the end. And when it gets to the end of the spool, the eyelet comes out and triggers that fork. Right now, I have my test ribbon in here, but it does have the original metal spools, which are always nice to have. I'm gonna put a new ribbon on this, but for now, we have the test ribbon in there. And it's the same basic design as uh, you'll see on Smith Coronas from this generation all the way up to the 60s and 70s. The mechanics on the inside are very similar. Every now and then some of the things changed, like the line lock underneath looks a little bit different from generation to generation and a few minor things, but overall very similar. Got a uh, backspace key, shift and shift lock. It has the chrome rimmed keys, which look really nice. Uh, here's the tabulator, margin release, and the ribbon color selector. It's not a key set tabulator like you see on the maybe the silent supers of the next generation. It's got a manual tab sets, and if you come around to the back, that's what these little doodads are. You just pull them off, and then they slide in you know, wherever you want to keep them. I have them set about every 10 spaces. And so when you want to tab over, just hit the tab button. And you can see in the little window right here where you're at. So I have it at 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. It's a little bit wobbly. Oops, we skipped over to 90. Uh, that's because I don't have any more tab sets. So anyway, that's where I have the tab sets. And up here, 
This here is the carriage centering lever. It's not really a lock, but when you're ready to put it in the case, push that down, oops, both hands on the carriage, push that down, and then it stops halfway so that you're centered to put it in the case. And when you're ready to start typing, you just have to pull to the left and that unhooks that little latch. There's no, oh, another difference between the Sterling and the Silent, I forgot to mention, is that there's no paper bail on the Sterling. You have just the little paper fingers. The Silent has the paper bail. So that, that was the other difference I forgot to mention earlier. Uh, let's see, really cool shop decal here. Parker Typewriter Company office equipment in Pasadena, California. So that's where Keith was when he bought the machine. And I'm glad it made its way to Texas. Here's the carriage release lever, one on each side. It's got a nice, nice bell. It's got push and slide uh, margins left and right. And then it has the paper support bars that just pull out like that. Easier to see it from the front. So they just fold down and fold down. On the next generation Smith Krona, like the Silent Supers, they put a plate over the back here to cover all this stuff up. But here it's just open so you can see the push and slide margins, the margin bar here, and then the tab rack with the tab stops. Down here you'll see the decals on the back. They're still in really good shape. LC Smith & Corona typewriter ink made in the US of A. A little bit of wearing right there, but overall the decals on the back and then on the front, if you'll zoom in on Smith Corona, really good shape. Same thing for the Sterling back here. And then back here, you got the paper guide so you can start, you can change where you wanna start the paper on the left hand side. I usually keep it over here at about zero. Here you have, um, this is your line space lever right here. Single space, double space. And then this is your variable, variable line spacer. So right now you'll hear the clicks. When you, oh, Daddy. lost the power on our camera. <laughs> oh, we'll be right back. Okay, for Christmas, I got this little uh, video stabilizer. You put your camera in there and it helps you take nice smooth videos. It works great when it's charged and our battery just went out. So anyway, we're back to just holding the camera like we used to. Boring. Okay, Ely, I'm gonna pass this back off to you. Now here, as I was saying, is the variable line space lever. Just pull it out, then the, it releases the clicks and you can go where we need to on the form. If you're typing up on a form or something and then click it back in and there's your clicks. And that's about it for the features. We'll uh, tilt it up here before we do the type test. You can see the feet are still nice and soft and in really good shape. Everything on the underside is nice and clean now. Like I said, it was a mess when we got it, uh, but it's nice and super clean now. Okay, and we will be back and we'll take a look at the case first before we do the typing test. I almost forgot to show, under the hood there is a tension adjustment right there for low, light touch or heavy touch. Just push that and then move it up and down and it locks into place where those little zigzag teeth are. And that makes it easier or uh, more difficult to push the key down. So I usually keep it towards the lighter end. Okay, here's the case. I used to think these were covered with leather, but it's not leather, it's, I don't know what they call it, oil cloth or something. And these can be about the stinkiest cases there are. Something about this Smith Corona case just attracts the, I don't know, the mold and the stink. And when I first opened it, it just reached out and smacked me in the face. That's how, how bad the smell was. But we uh, found tried a couple different things, and actually it's smelling pretty good now. Got rid of the stink, and uh, it's actually in good shape. Very few scuffs. I don't think there's any.
tears, maybe right there on the corner. But overall, it's in really good shape. Here's the metal feet on the bottom. Handles in good shape. Latches securely. Just pinch these little doodads and it opens up. This was original to the case. I've seen this in several cases. It just helps keep the machine, I guess, secure and keeps it from wobbling around in the case. And then here's a little cleat here. That's what goes into the little slot on the back of the machine that you see right here. So just be careful when you put it in the case, not to scratch the lettering, please. And also on the front, this little cleat here goes into a slot under the machine and that's what holds it secure. And when you're ready to take it out, there's a little button right here. That's the release button to get it out of the case. So overall, the case is in good shape now that it's not stinky. Now we're ready for the type test. And now for the type test. Forgot to show the paper release lever up there. If you put the paper in crooked, you just flip it up, scoot your paper. I have the paper fingers all the way on the edges of the paper there to hold it down since we don't have a paper bale. And we'll do a couple lines on black. The platen on this has a little bit of give still with my thumbnail, um, but I still recommend two pieces of paper that uh, protects the type slugs a little bit and gives it a little bit better impression that way. All right, first on black. I really like the typing feel on this. These keys feel a little bit different than the next generation that has the more ergonomic keys. They still feel really nice. The just has a really good typing feel. These are one of my favorite machines to type on. Uh, we'll show you the typeface there in a minute, but it looks nice and crisp. And we'll do a couple lines on red first. Oops, typo. And I'll zoom in a little bit on that. Nice clean imprint. Clean the type slugs. They had all kinds of dried ink in there. I cleaned this machine once, but deep in the crevices here in this ribbon vibrator, there was just all kinds of hardened ink. It took a couple times to get uh, cleaning to get that all out of there. But now everything is typing really well. And we'll do a quick alignment test. I did have to adjust that. Pass the camera back off. And everything. It's nice and even steaming. Yeah, just about right. Forgot to show it on the type test, but as you get over to the right, you'll hear the bell. And then when you get to the end, the line lock kicks in. And it won't let you keep typing unless you push the margin release button. Then you can keep typing out in the margin. And then on the left side, same thing. If you want to backspace into the left margin, you have to hold down the margin release button and then backspace. So that's it for the type test. Great machine to type on. Great looking machine. Just one of our all around favorites. We'll finish up this review with some pros and cons. 
pros. Classic looks. Love the black and black. Excellent cosmetic and mechanical condition. Smith Carano re re reliability. And easy access for repairs. Pro mirrored keys. And the cons? Cons would be that it was stinky at first, both the case and the machine. The, the soundproofing in this, I don't know if they call it tar felt or whatever it is, um, can get really smelly. The felt underneath the, the type slugs, I had to take that out and I doused them all with concrobium and put it in the sunlight for several hours and that knocked out the stink on the machine. Didn't work for the case, I had to use some different stuff for the case. But these old Smith Coronas can just be stinky, but uh, we fixed that. The other cons would be there's no paper bale. It's something I'm just used to having a paper bale, so it takes some getting used to having just paper fingers. And then we had a hard time thinking of any others until I typed up this, or I looked at that, and realized that there's no dedicated one key, so you have to use a lowercase l to get a number one. That's really about it for cons. Like I mentioned earlier, this is I know I, I say it's one of our favorite machines in a lot of our videos, but this really is one of our favorites among the favorites, just when you combine the looks and how nice they are to type on. And for hobbyists like me, they're, it's easy to get to the underside to adjust, uh, make adjustments and repairs. It's just an excellent machine. Thanks for joining us on Typewriter Minutes. Make sure to share, link, like, and subscribe. Bye.